Okay, now I'll try to, as you can see, I've got everything kind of removed here because I've been tracking down a short because I, what I did is I raised the antenna up and when I come back in the shack and tested, uh, uh, tested for a short. So I said, well, okay, I'm going to retrace everything. And sure enough, after a few hours of removing my many, a lot of my equipment, see, I've got an awful lot of equipment, an awful lot of feed lines and that coming into the shack. And uh, here's what I discovered. Okay, if you look in there, you'll see the two leads that go to your wire antenna. And if you look closely, you can see that the, uh, see those two leads are touching each other right about where that uh, solder joint is. You can see the two leads are actually touching. They're not supposed to touch each other because on carrying on down to the uh, coax connector on your, on your 303 with the, uh, with the beads on it well those two are not supposed to be touching each other which they are they were they're half wrapped around each other it's sort of a half wrap around I think when they assembled it the person assembling it when he went to slide each end through the holes on the PVC inadvertently did a half twist to pull the to pull the leads through the uh, PVC and it, I don't believe it's done on purpose. I think it's just because you, you're probably looking at the hole and trying to stab it and slide the wire through on each each side of the PVC with the holes and inadvertently uh, did a half wrap which joins the two leads together and then of course uh, uh, applied the glue and popped the cap on and that's what it looks like to me. And that's about it. But it's a pain in the rear end because you go through, uh, you know, <laughs> never take things for granted. I should have, I did test it before I uh, even installed it and it wasn't showing a short. But once I hooked up the wire, the slight tug on the end draw that uh, half wrap coil together, making the two ends bridge each other. And that's it. Now the cap isn't damaged the way I was explaining with the screwdriver, a fine screwdriver, small screwdriver wedged where the glue, glue run is, prying up carefully a little bit at a time, moving it around, 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 and then eventually it pops off and then I can still reuse the cap. That's my findings on the, uh, on the uh, choke. So here we go, back again. And luckily we've only got a half inch of snow and the sun is out. Normally we got six inches of snow by this time and the sun isn't out. Okay, that's it for now. Okay, now there's supposedly 50 some beads in there. Uh, toward beads and uh, I didn't count them. <laughs> I figure as long as there's more than six, it'll be all right. Now the cap, I've reassembled the cap, and if you can, you can see in the cap, oh, let me see if I can get this up here. If you can see in the cap, uh, it's not damaged. There's very little glue in it actually to pry apart with small screwdriver. But the cap's good. I've reassembled the. Uh, I've taken the leads that go through the PVC and untwisted them. And that was the only problem. Like I said, when they put it together, the person sliding it through the PVC holes for the leads is. Uh, you, you almost, if you're doing it, 
once you've got your fingers in there working it working the lead through you really can't tell when you pull it through and and you end up with a half twist where the where the two leads are connected together and that's what you don't want and it creates the short and once the caps thrown on and glued and that's it but success now I'll put my cap back on and put it back on the antenna and raise it back up and all should be good to go I did show uh, running a test on this single lead I did actually see a one to one 83 foot of uh, 83 feet of coax running to uh, 80 meter 260 260 foot uh, legs for 120 for 80 meters and the broadband that said what hap what happens is you're able to go about a hundred 120 130 cases either way and still maintain uh, 101 102 uh, SWR no uh, very little loss very little uh, feedback coming coming back and, and so it's doing the job it will see how long it lasts in, up here in the in the main winters and that's about it now here's what happens when you, up here in Maine when you run out of summer real quick and you get a lot of rainstorms I've been assembling this beam and uh, high gain uh, 16 uh, beam with the 40 meter add-on kit and because of the weather and and because of medical conditions, having to run back and forth to the hospital between myself and my wife, uh, ran out of summer. And now I've got my spare room loaded up with parts uh, on the antenna that I eventually will put all together. And I'm 72. I'll be 73 when I get this thing up. I'm 72 now. And I found it going to be a lot easier. I'm just going to rent a hoist with a work platform. Uh, you can rent them now fairly reasonable. And I'm willing to do that. It's a lot safer. And I'm just going to rent a platform hoist with a joystick and, and uh, bring this thing on up onto the top of the tower and bolt it in. That way I'm not up there with a with a harness strapped to the top of the tower. At my age, I don't fly too good. <laughs> but <laughs> the problem is a lack of room. So I've assembled uh, basically as much of it as I could here in a spare room. And that's my story. Oh, antenna work, antenna work. At a younger age, not bad. You can get out there in a couple of feet of snow and uh, and the wind blowing, and you can you can do that kind of stuff. But as you get older, it's a little bit harder. So that's it. W1QT.